We are working with the Rugby League All-Stars to help support and raise awareness for some of the heroes who play our game. To be a part of it, visit rugbyam.co.uk forward slash All-Star events. Welcome to Rugby AM and coming up on tonight's show, we head to Lee Centurions for In The Sheds as they host the Sheffield Eagles. We get Jason Robinson's perspective on Sonny Bill Williams coming to Super League. We hear from the icon Stuart Pearce about his love of Rugby League. And joining us tonight, JJB, is Two heavyweights, heavyweights. international <laughs> class in the studio. <laughs> Hull FC Paramount legend Peter Sterling, and he's here. The big signing for KR, Sean Kenny Dowell, New Zealand legend. Boys, welcome to Rubem. Thanks for having us. Thanks, guys. Fantastic to be both here, and I'll start with yourself, Pete. Big thanks to Mick Spear and the whole Rugby League family. Mick's a great guy we've done yep. a lot of work with, and when we reached out to him to ask you to come on the show, he was so obliging and so positive, and, and it really means a lot that you've come and give us your time tonight. Oh, I appreciate that. It's nice to be here, and I've had a great time. It's just gone way too, way too fast. Uh, it seems surreal that it's 35 years since I've been over here playing footy and that people still remember those days, and especially the, the Wembley match, of course. Um, but everybody's been so welcoming, so hospitable, and uh, to go to the Hull Derby the other night was a bit special as well. So it's it had a great time. I've tried to fit as much in as I possibly could, and I think I've done that. Throw in a night at Enfield watching the mighty Liverpool FC have a victory as well. So I've, I've had a little bit of everything, and um, some really nice functions that I've gone to, especially obviously in the Hull area where people have just been fantastic. Well, when you're over here, obviously, we uh, went over to World Cup with Gary Schofield, people like yep. Roy Dickinson, and whenever they're in an Aussie city, they seem to have friends that they played with from way back when that they can just ring up and catch up like they never left each other behind. Who, who are some of your old friends that you like to catch up with when you're over in the UK? Well, I think Luke Crook's pretty right. much on the top of that list, and um, he's still involved with the club now, so you know, it's great. I had a night out with him and, and Scoey, Gary Schofield. Um, I let them do most of the talking and I'm drinking halves while they're drinking the pints so I, I just pace myself fairly well but I think you know that's a great thing even though it's so long ago that we were teammates it's just very comfortable and it's like you know you saw them last week so uh, it's been an absolute joy we're a little bit older a little bit um, balder and a little bit fatter and all of those kind of things but the bond is still there um, despite the fact there's been a number of decades gone. Skids, it, Pete mentions the whole derby now you've played in South versus Roosters derbies, you've you've be, played for New Zealand against Australia, uh, New Zealand against Tonga. But how did the whole derby compare to actually playing that game? Oh, it was right up there. The atmosphere was like nothing I've ever seen before. Just the way the fans they like really get involved in the game, and they're they're very vocal and they sing and dance and they they chant your name, and you just don't get that in Australia. So it was a huge night, and I thought the game was a really good game as well to be a part of, and. Yeah, it was a good night all around, I thought. You'd be happy with the performance of uh, OK. I've been watching them all week. We've got them mm. coming up this week, yeah, so I've yeah. seen a little bit of your edge there. Um, oh. Nickin and uh, Ellis and yourself, obviously, on that right edge. You had some joy, didn't you? You competed right through to the last sort of 10, 15 minutes. I thought it was a great competition. Yeah, we're really happy with the performance. Obviously, a bit disappointed. I thought, you know, we could have easily won that game, <laughs> but had a few moments gone our way. But yeah. um, really, really take a lot of confidence out of that performance. It's a great foundation to, to build our season on, obviously with a win in the first round versus Wakefield and a great performance against you know the one of the heavyweights of the comp so we'll take a lot of confidence um, going forward for the rest of the season. Played under some great coaches back in Australia and um, Tony Smith, uh, an Aussie, he's in charge of you now. Um, I know it's probably only been a short time but what's the attraction in Tony so far? What do you like about his style oh, of coaching? I just, oh, he's really open, he loves um, you know shifting the ball and I think he's got a game plan that really suits the calibre of the players that we have at the club and He's really good at bringing the team together and um, yeah, I'm really enjoying playing under Tony at the moment. You're immortalised as well, Skids, oh. <laughs> you're up on the wall, you're on the outlook, you, you've made the cut, mate. Well, I wanted to ask you, you've obviously been here a few months now, how have, have you adapted to England and, and do you like England? Are you, are you enjoying the culture? Have you done any travelling? So I know you're quite a keen traveller. Yeah, it's been good to um, you know get settled in, get to know all the boys and, and the area and it has been a bit of a, a tough time to get used to the weather conditions and getting dark at bloody 3.30 at night time and 8.30 in the morning the sun comes up. But other than that, you know, the people are really good, the culture's really good and 
um, the boys at the club have made a, a seamless transition and I really have enjoyed getting to you know the air, know the area and, and travel around the UK countryside and it's a beautiful part of the world. Peter, Peter, Turkish bus, arrogant, talk to me. <laughs> yeah, <dude. Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was just out driving, as I say, going out to my old stomping grounds and that, and I was out at Harrogate and went past and I saw the sign and um, I just thought, well, yeah, I, that, that <laughs> captures my attention and the architecture. Unbelievable. Yeah. Oh, wow. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like it's just, you know, the mosaic tiles and that out there, it's just nothing like I've seen back home. And, and go, and I just had a little, a couple of hours there. If you go into the, the plunge pool, be prepared, freezing. <laughs> and, uh, and I'm, I'm alright with the water, but it was, yeah, just, just something a little bit different than caught my eye. And um, uh, you find so many wonderful little places just out and about in little villages and just got a great atmosphere and feel. They've got the, the log fire going, and uh, yeah, I, I love it, absolutely. It's, it's so different to home. Take me back to uh, your time at Hull, because you told me one of the best stories. When you come over here, obviously used to Parramatta, winning four comps uh, in Australia, and you've come over, and you couldn't believe it when they arranged a mid-season trip. Yeah, there were a couple of little things that stood out. <laughs> the mid-season trip, oh, that was a great attraction. I, when I, it just, was sprung upon me. I didn't. We were doing well in the cup competitions, and as you know, you know games back up there, and so the hierarchy thought it was a good idea to take us on a mid-season trip. Well, I've never heard of a mid-season <laughs> trip, and we're off to Mallorca. So went to Mallorca, and um, a little bit sunny over there, and a bit warmer than what we'd come from. And had a great first day there, and we had training schedule for eight o'clock the next morning. And I'm I'm very particular, you know, early for training all that. So eight o'clock the next morning, I turn up. And I'm one of five people <laughs> that are there for training. <laughs> the coach didn't make it. <laughs> so I, I looked around and thought, okay, and, um, I think we might have lost two or three blokes with alcoholic poisoning during that week. <laughs> I went back to Parramatta, went to Dennis Fitzgerald, the boss of the Earls, and I suggested the, the mid-season trip away. I nearly got cut on the spot. They, they looked at me like I was from another planet. But that was only after, I don't mean to take over here, but my first game at the club, Hull FC, I'll never forget it, was against Wakefield. As we were running out, uh, the number 13, the loose forward, Mick Crane, what quality player. Um, great Britain player. Great Britain player. As we are running out, he's got the cigarette in the mouth. <laughs> <laughs> and as we, t as we cross the line, he flicks it over to the dugout. <laughs> So we go out and we play, and there's the first break in play. As soon as there's a break in play, he's back over the dugout to have another. Wow. Time to change, eh? <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it's just, you know, the game, I love the game over here, um, it's very different to Australia, I found it. Like, it was very tough, physically yeah. very tough. Um, but very, you know, you had to keep your head down, and, and very competitive games I found over here. I think it suited my style which is probably why I, I embrace the game so readily over here. But you're talking about the difference in the game from a geographic point of view, but tell me the differences in a time point of view then, but then, and now, obviously, smoking cigarettes probably. <laughs> you don't encourage that in today's game, but if you could bring some from the old game, the game that you played in, and being a, a, stu a student of the game, what, what would you bring to, to today's game? Yeah, I don't want to get on a soapbox here, but yeah. I, I have sort of firm beliefs on this. I, I think the greatest attraction that rugby league has is the gladiatorial aspect of it. You know, the days when you know, so you've got nothing left, bloke, your teammate's on the ground and he's spent, but you pick him up, yep. you put him up, you drag him back in the line and you, you've got that complete trust that you've got his back and he's got yours type thing. And to me, we don't have enough fatigue and, and tiredness in the game. Today's players are magnificent. Like they are great athletes, they are fitter, faster, stronger, all of that, no doubt about it. But the game itself, I'd like to see. I, I know when I was a player, as a as a as a ball player, you start with a, a brick wall in front of you, yeah. and your job is to break that down. And there's ways and means of doing that, you know. And eventually, you break that down, and that's when you find a bit of space and you get to play and you get to put guys into holes. When interchange and unlimited interchange, especially, came in, what happens then is you you try and break this brick wall down, but when it starts to weaken, they just add another brick, yeah. just bring a fresh player on. So you're kind of starting ag again. And I just don't know if we've got that balance right. You know, I know that we're looking at maybe ch making interchange changes, that this, the number of down the track a little bit. To me, that, as I say, the gladiatorial aspect of it, that's the fabric of our game. And we can never, ever lose that because I think as a fan, that's the greatest attraction to see players go through the pain barrier and to, and to you know, just battle away when, when, you know, they have to draw on on reserves of strength that 
you know, sometimes you don't see in other sports. Skids, I've got to ask you, um, talking of gladiators there, one man you played alongside who was right up there for toughness and uh, physique is Sonny Bill Williams. He's come over to this comp and he's, he's had two <coughs> losses to start with, but I just wondered what you thought from being a friend of his and playing at international and at club footy, what, how you think he's going to go this year? And you signed the same kind of contract as him, apparently. <laughs> oh, <laughs> <we're>, uh, yeah. <laughs> no, I think yeah, he's, um, he's a perfectionist, so I think it's going to take him a little while to adjust. Obviously, obviously being out of the game for five years, but I think we saw glimpses of what he can do um, you know, in the last two games. And I think the more time he spends out there, the more he's going to adapt, and then the more he'll have an influence on the team and get to learn the players around him. And then I think you know, then he'll assert his hand later on as the season goes on. But... I'm, I'm, I've no doubt that he's going to make this um, transition a successful one, and you know, he's an athlete, he's the um, you know ultimate professional, and I'm sure that's going to rub off on all the players around them um, the more time they spend together. We caught up with dual code legend Jess Robinson, and this is his thoughts on Sonny Bill Williams. As long as I've been involved in rugby league, people have always said rugby league doesn't get the exposure that it deserves in the media. Well, welcome Sonny Bill. Yeah because he has taken the exposure to another level. Say what you want about him, you can call the fact that he's on big money, but that big money, for me, has already been justified by the attention that Rugby League has got in the world's media. Yeah. Not, not, not just Super League, not just in the North, but everybody wants to see Sonny Bill Williams play. Fans, you know, at Wakey, Cass, you know, you, you're going to come. You're going to come and see your team playing against Toronto, but more so. And, you know, they say one man doesn't make a team, but at this moment in time, there's so many players that want to put themselves up against Sonny Bill. One of the things that is going to be hard for Sonny Bill is one, it takes a bit to adjust back into rugby league. So I get that the fitness and everything else is different. But also, he has a way of playing. And I know myself from playing, you know, in the Wigan teams, you know, you get to know each other. You, get, you know, you know how each other plays, you know strengths and weaknesses. So I think one of the hardest things for Sonny Bill is not how he plays, it's how everybody else adjusts to him. Yeah. Because he's a big old unit. He's got a great, probably one of the best offloading games in world rugby, either code. So it's just then them working out, right, how can we maximise this? I think it'll just take time to settle in. But I, th I, think it, I think it'll come. It just needs a bit of time. And again, you know, you've got one of the best players in, probably in, in sport, never mind rugby, you know, in Super League. We all should be singing the praises. We all should be making the most of it because it's going to bring more sponsors in. It's going to bring more supporters, you know, through the turnstiles. And I mean, what is it not to like? We started this back in the day, 2012, just yeah. to tell the story, the personalities, and, and one man who was being involved, we were inspired by the footy show. How was it to, to be on the footy show in the golden era? And also, why was it so important for rugby league in Australia? Oh, it was different, that's for sure. I don't think we've seen anything like it. It actually had been a show that had been operating in the AFL, like the, the yeah. Australian rules down in yeah. Melbourne. And I think most of it had to do with the fact that Paul Borton was that figurehead. You know, he was the Lone Ranger, I was Tonto type thing. And um, he just, you know, two hours of live television, it's not easy, as you guys know. You know, you, yeah. you make a mistake, you do it in front of a lot of people, and there's no safety net. And he just did it in his own inimitable style, and we just we had just had a great time with it. I was probably always a little bit more of the serious side of the game, so, yeah. um, but I enjoyed being, because it was good fun. I liked the people I worked with, and I liked the people I worked for. And I think it was important it was, a, it was an, an avenue or a bridge between potential fans to the game who really didn't maybe follow it, but all of a sudden started watching the footy show yep. and got them interested in it. You know? yeah. So it, we, we attracted a different kind of audience, Absolutely. I guess. Um, and we hope that some of those, by watching the footy show, would then start watching the weekend games and get interested in rugby league across the board. When Bo Ryan were going out, and I remember when he, 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 were, he were taking the mick out of Sonny for a long time, and he took it seriously. He, he got to him and it, and it got him mad. But what were it like as a player? Did you used to laugh along every week? I used to always tune in, like you said. It's uh, it's pretty funny to sit up and watch, you know, both sides of the spectrum. You get the comedy side of it, but also, you know, a good insight into the teams and, and the football as well. And 
who used to love staying up late on Thursday night and just to watch the show. It was great to see and be sitting next to one of the legends here today. It's, you, it's great. You guys need to have a serious look at yourselves. Right? <laughs> <laughs> really do. I think it's really important though that people see the other side of a player as well as a, as a character or a personality. Uh, other than that 80 minute window when they're just going hammer and tongue and often playing in a, a gladiatorial environment so to get that personality side out is massive because certainly over in UK blue collar working class yeah. people who play a ga great game of rugby league men and women I think they've got a, a great deal to offer it's good to see them personalities and also as well being a, an ex-player yourself have you found that you get a little bit more out of the players because they respect and understand the fact that you've been there and done it yeah, I think they're more comfortable yeah. and, and, and if you feel comfortable then you tend to open up a bit don't you and I, I think that was the case like some of our players and I don't know about the majority but a lot of our players they've got great stories behind them you know from where they've come yeah, from what yeah. they've battled through what their interests are so there's yeah I, and I think as a fan if you get an insight into players then you tend to warm to them and yeah. you know you want to support them even more um, whether it, they're from your own club or from from another club as well there's just a lot of stories out there and, and we don't hear enough of, of the good ones and the interesting ones it's good to want to ask you about the goldfish ball because you've been at the roosters for so many years then at the nights um, so much pressure to massive clubs have you found life just away from the field in, in the uk is it giving you more room to just enjoy life yeah it's been um you know quite quite a good uh, transition over here it's definitely a lot less pressure and um you don't get noticed in the streets yeah. as much and but you know it's insane that and hull is actually no, rugby league <laughs> mad so you, you do get recognized every yeah. now and then but you know they're very supportive and i don't think there's the the external media pressures that they um you know have in australia but you know i even found moving from the roosters to newcastle was a um you know, a step back because it's um it seems to be that when you're in Sydney where all the media outlets are, yeah. there's a lot more pressures and so I think I was already at a really good place um you know living in Newcastle for the last three years and you do enjoy life and you may, I'm I'm pretty happy with you know how it's going over here so far. Jones, it's it's flown already. We're at the, nearly the end of the part. Um, big thanks to Mike Latham, uh, Derek Beaumont, everyone at Lee Centurions because. We're going to go now in the sheds with John Duffy. It's big, this. He is he's a character, John Duffy. It's big because um, he looks like Lord Bolton, the different Game of Thrones. I, I, like, I like him carrying on <laughs> his little curly hair. But a lot of coaches um, are quite particular about letting cameras in changing rooms. Yeah, yeah. Um, so really appreciate it. And I know it's really popular with our audience as well. The one that Leon Price did yeah, up massive. there, the, uh, working him was uh, huge. So big thanks to Lee and uh, here's a bit of an insight. Here's a bit of an insight. We're going to go over now to Lee Sports Village. This is going to take you into part two. Stay tuned uh, right here, Rugby M, part two at Free Sports. Uh, check this out. It's in the sheds. <laughs> Everything today is about your attitude. I need to know what's happening down there, right? Because that ain't a play that I've put on the tip sheet or they've said. Welcome to the Lee Sports Village, the home of Lee Centurions. We've got a special In The Sheds feature with the head coach, John Duffy, as he gives us a real insight into his coaching duties on game day. First home fixture of the season against the Sheffield Eagles. I'm excited, it's game day, I can't wait. It's Anthony Thackeray, is he uh, the key man we've got to look out for today? Yes, he is, yeah. Um, he's been around the game a long time and he's a danger man today and he was last year as well. So, there's not only that, they've got threats all over. Aaron Brown's playing really well at 13 for him at the minute, skipping across the park. So, we've got to do our homework on him and make sure our detail's right. Uh, but they'll come out really aggressive. They've got, um, you know, some good young kids there. Uh, he wants to stake a claim for the jersey, so uh, we've got to match their enthusiasm um, and make sure we, we stick to our plan. Yeah, they're still going to come out, they'll still come out on keep pressure. Yeah. Just make sure, if we're over halfway line, yeah. that we can play. Yeah. I spoke to him about bang as soon as you're there and then head to the big edge. Hey, they'll not be able to play at our pace though, will they? They'll not be able to if we're fighting on that floor and we're winning the ropes.
Okay, we're ready to go. Yeah. Building the warm up, just make sure your talk's there. All right? Make sure you're noisy, make sure you're getting ready for, for battle. All right? <laughs> Everybody going in hard. Everything today is about your attitude. I'm bothered about this room. All right? And us getting better each week. Um, and a performance of bettering last week. Yeah, and we grind it out, we grind it out. All right, and then we put them to the side. But we've got to do the tough stuff first. And that's your dig, that's your run hard. All them simple things and non negotiable things. All right, let's come back in after this warm up, Buzzy. <laughs> Yeah, they did get us Halifax last week. They, f they give it Halifax last week, didn't they? Want you in your glutes? Yeah. Talk it up, boys, now, pick it up. In the background, Lee Centurion's middles are just doing a run out drill, going in twos, looking at that support play. <laughs> Got a great win, 36 10 last week against the Jewsbury Rams. Want to build on that, especially at home. Sheffield boys have just had a great warm up by the legend Keith Senior, my training partner on a Saturday. Just gone in. Attitude, attitude, boys. 13 players on there going for the motions. The plays, how they're going to break down Sheffield, re emphasising the game plan John Duffy's given them to do. Right, right, right. right. right uh, your toss, your cup. It is. What do you want to do? We'll kick off. You'll kick off which direction? We'll go that way. Alright, so you're going to kick off towards the north stand. Yeah. Alright? Best luck to you. Have a good one, boys. Have a good one. Cheers. Balls out, Udi. Good balls out, lads. Lead the way, yeah? Lead in. Expect the ball. Urgency to them balls. Anything tough. Hey, listen. The first time we get a chance to D up, I want to see what we've got. Have you all got me? I want to see it. Keep that goal line D same as last week, boys. Enjoy the first half of scene 40, yeah? Let's go. First game of the season, all about. Listen, we've got to start the control again from early on. Enjoy putting these sword, yeah? yeah. Enjoy a good performance here, good team performance, yeah? yeah. Enjoy it, Leon Free, boys. One, two, three, Lee! Let's go! Have a word with Mark there. His second eight seconds get up. Is he gassed? Is he gassed, Mark? Yeah. Just tell him great work there. Just watch that though, because they're skipping across, aren't they? They're skipping and trying to play. So Luke in front. Who's skipping? Who was skipping then? Actually, he's skipping. We're gonna go get him. Don't let him skip, Mark. Are you all right? It's sweet. He gassed. Are you all right? He says he's sweet. We need to fight. Get up. All right. Yeah. 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 We said it, didn't we? On touch sheet. Run power play is good. I need to know what's happening down there, right? Because that ain't a play that I put on the tip sheet or they've said. That one where we're knocked on there, right? Just tell Liam. He either passes or runs, he doesn't need to pick up and brings on to the ball. And our fight, our fight on the floor is non existent at the minute.
Hey, Woodsy, Woodsy! Nice, Woodsy! Hey, start him running, turn off, he's right! 26 0 half time, Lee dominating, especially on their right as Junior Sal, Adam Hickson, hat trick first half. John Duffy's game plan must have been attacking down Sheffield's left edge, dominating in the middles. Regroup, they'll be happy with that. We are working with the Rugby League All-Stars to help support and raise awareness for some of the heroes who play our game. To be a part of it, visit rugbyam.co.uk forward slash all-star events. We are working with the Rugby League All-Stars to help support and raise awareness for some of the heroes who play our game. To be a part of it, visit rugbyam.co.uk forward slash all-star events. Welcome back, part two here on Free Spots Rugby M, and we are in the the presence of greatness tonight with the legend man. Jimmy Jones Buchanan, <laughs> Peter Stirling and Sean Kenny Dowell. Um, we left Lee there half time, 26 0 up, easy team talk. What's been the biggest blow up you've you've experienced in the sheds in, in your career? I don't know if it was the biggest one, but it was definitely the funniest looking back though. At the time, <laughs> I was scared to death because I was probably about 19, just trying to get in the team, and Dean Lance was fresh over. Um, and he's coaching us. We lost the first five games at 2000 season on bounce, wow. which is unheard of for, for Leeds. And uh, I remember at half time he come in, I'm one of the young lads sat in corner with a few other young lads who'd been on bench. And uh, he tried to slam the door on my in, but it was on those hydraulic bars. <laughs> so it moved a little bit and then shut really slowly. And then, it, then he gets a broom out of the corner, tried to snap it, and it won't snap it. And it's like, whoa. Oh, I've I mean, I been a young kid, I've got a belt up here and, uh, and crack on, but that, that always sticks out in my mind. Yeah, going back to 82, Kangaroo Tour, Frank Stanton wasn't happy maybe halfway through the tour with the way, way things were going, like a little bit of discipline was sort of started to sort of just disappear a bit. So he assembled the whole squad and he gave us a good going over then just to make sure that you know, we didn't let standard slip type thing. But I found with coaches, I was more scared if they didn't have much to say. It was That was saying something in itself, if you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. It's good, it? Oh, mine would have to be Brownie too. It goes on the lines of a bit of silence. He just walked in and... He slammed down one of the chairs and said, you know, you can do the buddy team talking stuff, <laughs> that's enough. And like, every, all the coaching staff get out and then we're all sitting in the corner just looking at each other, just going, oh, I know what's happening here. But that was, that was a pretty bad one. Still, you, you played with some great players in your career and the two teams in particular, the 82 team and the 86 team, the touring teams, how did those teams compare? And what do you remember about those tours? Any any stories? Because obviously, it's, uh, any stories you can tell on camera. <laughs> well, that shortens up the list, doesn't it? Um, yeah, look, that, I guess they were different uh, tours for myself because yeah. in 1982, I was just a young bloke, happy to make the side. I, I probably came across second or third string halfback. But because Parramatta had done very well in the competition and we'd played right through to win the grand final, that gave me a little bit of a head start because the other halfbacks sort of maybe lacked a bit of condition so I got thrown in alongside Brett Kenny for the first game and we kind of got the, the jump and we played quite well and didn't give an opportunity for, for that to change so yeah, that came out of the blue played all five tests in that tour and I came across tests. not expecting to play to play any but as a young bloke in 82 when I came over in 86 I was actually vice captain of the side with Wally Lewis as the skipper so it was a much more I guess leadership role <clears throat> I knew the game over here, I, I knew the places type thing, so for the younger players coming over there, they were kind of looking for me to lead the way, whereas it was in reverse yeah. uh, four years previous. I think it was a sad day for rugby league when the Kangaroo Tours stopped being a part of our game. And there was obviously a bit of a different game then, a lot of a different game. I speak to Jim Mills and, and people like that and they say it was a lot of the time like legalised violence, but you, you, you one, one, one memory sticks out for you. Tell us about that. <laughs> I'm nervous going into my first game and it's very physically. I'll start with my first tackle. My first tackle in a green and gold jersey was on big Les Gawley, a back rower. When I hit him, I thought I'd dislodged every bone in my body. <laughs> and I remember thinking, I'm not quite sure I should be here. Like this might just be too good for me. And a little bit later in the game, there was an incident where, again, I questioned whether I should be out there or not. <laughs> Craig Young, great front row for us, takes off down the, the right-hand side and he's got support looming on his inside in Wayne Pearce. So he draws the fullback and passes. The fullback for Great Britain was George Fairburn. Yeah. Now, the pass had gone, and I think Craig might have relaxed a little bit as he let it go. 
and honestly, George Fairburn hit him with the best coat hanger tackle. Today, you'd get two years on the sideline. In Australia, <laughs> you would be, you'd be, I don't know what it's like here, but he didn't miss him. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and I'm on the other side of the field, and I'm thinking, thank goodness that wasn't me, and I'm staying away from George. Because you had some great experiences with New Zealand. What's been your favourite uh, memories of playing for, for the New Zealand? I remember when I, I just turned 18, and um, I just started playing first grade, and. I got called up to, um, you know, travel over here to the UK, and then um, I ended up on the, you know, Centenary All Gold Store, and um, yeah, I got to it. play. Yeah, we played Northern Union, and yeah. it was there to mark a hundred years of rugby league, and we got to go to the Buckingham Palace and meet the Queen, and yeah. oh, we had uh, some legends in the team. It was Stacey Jones's last game, and Steve Price was it? Was it? Steve Price, yeah, he was playing like to, um, you know, commemorate Della Messenger, and, like yeah. travelling over with yeah. the first New Zealand touring team, and. But I was playing with idols, you know, Ruby, Ruben Wiki and Ali Lawatiti, and I was just an 18-year-old kid, and I got to travel and go on tours to, to London with um, you know, kids that I idolised growing up. So that was a huge, huge achievement for me at such a young age to be able to, you know, travel with the calibre of those guys that I, you know, looked up to as a kid. The first ever All Goals game, mate, original, the original team, yep. played at Bromley. No way. The first game was at Bromley, mate, yeah. That 1908? All seven, and then they came yeah. back in 08, I think. Yeah. Played at Cheltenham. Uh, Stamford Bridge. It was awesome too, like on that tour we got to, you know, we travelled to Huddersfield and got to, you know, learn a bit more history about yeah, the game yeah. and um, man, it was a really good tour. We read about these guys at uh, halftime, rushes with coaches, let's go now back to Lee Sport Village and catch up with John Duffy as he gives his halftime tea talk as we finish off Lee in the Sheds. Listen, I'm happy with completions, and we've had a few errors, which is fair enough, it happens in games. All right. What I'm not happy with was is not being professional. Right. They want to come, like everyone does when they come here, and spoil everything. Right. And just that last eight minutes, we start dropping down, getting involved, getting us in bid, which we don't need to do. All right. And there's too many of us then getting involved. Do not let me see that in the second half. And we're going to win this and win it comfortably, all right, by being professional and sticking to the plan and doing everything tough. Have you got me, lads? Yeah, Give me yeah. some eye contact. Yeah. Because yeah. Yeah? Yeah. when we do that, they can't live with us. And we knew that anyway. All right, but we're coming in and out of it. Don't push anything. If you make a line break and there's no one there, the play is up and down play off the back. I'll leave with you, Danny. 40 minutes, professional. Yeah. We got us an yeah. hour intensity and our standards. Uh, Let's roll, boys. Yeah, yeah boys. Yeah. Yeah. We're going in here, yeah, boys. These are no push ups. Yeah, 26 nil at half time. You can only have a block and better back. Yes, We've got a yeah. professional yeah. block here. Yeah. Stay on board, boys. We're going to complete it. Lay on three, boys. One, two, three, Lay. Lay. Let's go. Don't shift, shift, Not don't junior. shift. Good is it as a knocker playing on the back of Leone, Mason. There's some big lads. Yeah, there is, and and like and there's and there's Gerard as well. And, and I thought Jordy Thompson had an absolute stormer today, and uh, and really got us going. And, and, and it's 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 so easy off the back of that. Um, easy for the halves, easy for the nines to play what we want to play, and and the score showed today. It's a big good score for us, but that ten for them was sort of disappointing in the end. But. Um, Definitely take a lot of confidence from that and kick on to New York next week. Yeah. 
Okay, lads, give us your eyes and ears for a sec. Right, another real perfect. We asked for professionalism, didn't we? Second half. And that's what we got. <coughs> right, we, you've got to make sure we're concentrating when it gets a bit boring, niggly, that kind of stuff. Yeah. You've got to switch on, make sure your concentration's there all the time. So another outstanding performance that we can build on. A few tries off kicks from them. All right. We've got to build now, do the right thing, make sure, compulsory rub, compulsory, ice bath, hot cold. Anyone who's injured, make sure you, you tell Becca so she can put it on the injury form for us tonight and do the right thing, all right? Recover now, two days off. See you Tuesday. Yes. Yeah, right. Hey, 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 we keep going. We keep yeah, going. each yeah. week. All right, good work, boys. Thanks, boys. Thanks, boys. Thanks once again to everybody at Lee, looking good so far in the championship. Uh, we're going to go now and talk about uh, Challenge Cup because you've won a couple uh, and it's a special competition. Won one. You've won one. Won one, really. And you've John Terry to one. John Terry to one. You've John Terry to one. Bit of context, I had to go lift trophy <laughs> up with uh, my mate Kevin Timfield because I was injured, uh, which was a really poignant part of my career actually because he never left me behind. Talked about it a million times, but Challenge Cup, they are special. Uh, you played in that really famous one. Uh, against Wigan back in the 1980s as well, which some people say uh, was the best Challenge Cup final of all time. What do you remember about that game? I'd rather it have been a poor game and we won. I, you know, <laughs> yeah. be, everyone keeps saying what a great game it was, and, and look it was, you know, it was a spectacle to have 28-24 scoreline, and um, again, a lot of people kind of surmise that if it had gone for another five or ten minutes, we might have won the game, yeah. but you know, we had 80 minutes to win it. You know, we, we just yeah. weren't good enough during that period of time. But I suppose, the fact that my disappointment was tempered just a little bit, that the difference that day was Brett Kenny, yeah. my Parramatta teammate. If Brett doesn't play, we win by 15. Yeah. I have no doubt about that. Uh, yeah, we, we had some great chances. There are moments in the game that, that stay with me. Uh, I missed a tackle on Sean Edwards that led to a try, and when you look at you know, only a four-point margin, I actually threw a pass. I'm down a cross field and threw a pass a long pass that was going to Dane O'Hara yeah. down the left wing and as I delivered it I thought well he's going to score 40 metres down there's no one in front and then I hit the ground and looked up Henderson Gill was putting the football down the other end of the field <laughs> Dane O had stumbled as he went to catch it and it just you know just little moments in the game um, but 80, you got 80 minutes to win it the one thing I'll remember about the Wembley final was as we walked out I'd never played in front of 100,000 people before. Yeah. And as I got to the end of the tunnel, I looked up and there was this sea of red and white. And that was off. I thought, whoa, what's, what's happened here? And then as I walked a little bit further, the noise from behind when I turned around and that's where the black and white fans were, the noise almost physically pushed you forward. Wow. It was almost yeah. a physical <laughs> presence of, and, and that I've never experienced <clears throat> that sensation before. It, it almost propelled you out there. So for me, it was just a great experience. I was happy for Brett that he was part of that, that winning side. But I don't have very many regrets in my career. And I, I, I have a big regret that I, I couldn't contribute to a win that, that particular game. Pete's been, he's achieved, he's, he's played 38 games at Hull. You've got a few years at Hull, F, uh, Hull KR. What would be the dream to, would to play in a Challenge Cup final? What are, you, what, what are you really hoping to achieve here? No, I think. We just want to be successful as a club and whether that's playing in a final, yeah. it's about getting the best out of the group of players that we have, being a, you know, part of taking that team back up. You know, we're starting from the bottom and we're, we're setting our sights high, so just to be you know, a part of a, a club that's you know, putting ourselves in a good position and be able to contend for, you know, Wembley, playing on Wembley would be a you know, successful time over here for me. It was really impressed you. Give us one name, one player who's really impressed you. I like uh, Ben Crooks. You know, he's a, yeah. only a tiny little skinny winger, and but <laughs> uh, he's got a, a big heart, and you know, he runs the ball back hard, and 
he's been great. I think he's scored five tries in two games so far to start the year off. So, you know, he's a, he's a legend bloke. He doesn't shut up. He keeps coming at you 24-7, but, you know, I'm really enjoying getting to know him. It was interesting sitting up in the grandstand in the derby the other night, and I was sitting next to Lee Crooks. And obviously, as I say, he's still on the staff there and he, he wanted FC to win that night. But to have his son playing for the other team, you know, and I could feel him when Ben touched what you'd be a couple of twitches type thing. And then that. <laughs> so he, he obviously wanted FC to win, but he wanted his son to play well. And he got both on the night. So it was yeah. a really good night. But to sit there, you know, that's a, that must be a strange sensation when you're, you know, your son is playing on the, the opposition team and... You've got mixed feelings, haven't you, yeah, in, in yeah. some ways? But he handled it pretty good, Crooks. Well, he's got a good try. That was a great try, went yeah. through a set of ones. But that, for me, is Tony Smith incarnate. I think when um, when he coached me, he'd let anybody do anything yeah. as long as he practised it. And it was great to see him in Chalabac out there after a few yeah. years at Sarta Super League, playing a bit of nine as well, you know, mm. a bit out of his comfort zone maybe. But uh, Tony's a great coach in terms of making you believe in yourself and you can come up with those magic moments in the big games. I think that try just typified the way that you know he wants us to play this yeah. year. It's back yourself. If you see something, eyes up, and you know if you want to offload the ball, or, you know offload it, and, and it just gives you that confidence to be out there and you know play your natural game. It's not too too structured, and we've seen that. And the younger guys, you know, they just you know really find their way. And it's an exciting brand of football too. You know, I think that suits the type of players that we have in our team as well. So it's got the boys humming. We, we spoke about a few icons there, and. Uh, one man who was a real icon in sport is Stuart Pearson. Oh. Kind of ruined my childhood when he missed that penalty for England <laughs> in 1990. But he loves rugby league. It was on the back. Do you know what he said ruined it there for me? I remember I remember nine years old yeah. when they missed the penalty I run out into hallway I <laughs> fell on my face and I says to my mum you're going to have to take me all in six weeks to cheer me up they were my exact words it destroyed me but that was the uh, most iconic sporting moment the yeah. 1990 World Cup uh, Italian 90 um, with Lineker and Gazza Gazza crying. crying and Chris Waddle they were, they were heroes Stuart Pearce was one of my heroes as a kid mate so yeah. to see him watching and getting involved in rugby league Special. Let's go over now and meet the legend, the icon, Stuart Pearce. Tony Smith came and presented on the footballing pro licence. I was working at the FA at the time as the England under 21 manager and I'd done my pro licence so I used to put myself forward to look at any speakers that I'd never heard that come through the door and Tony Smith's name was down, a rugby league coach, an Australian, uh, at the time he was a Warrington Wolves manager and I thought it'd be interesting to go and listen to him. My preconceived ideas of what he's like as a manager and uh, were blown out of the water in the first couple of minutes of sitting and listening to Tony, you know, he was well thought out, he talked about the process of the game rather than the result on a Saturday and he seemed a really intelligent man and I thought, you know what, I want to get to know this fella and probably get to know a bit about his sports. So I went up to Warrington, watched training, watched the games and a friendship developed between me and Tony. You know, we're good friends now, we speak every week. Tony's been in to watch me work with the England setup. He's been to West Ham a year or so ago. I asked him to come in and, and track me for four days and give me feedback about how I'm working, you know, because I, I value his opinion. And I got hooked on Warrington and the family of supporters that are Warrington Wolves, you know, and, and I just love the sport now. I, I travel up, I, you know, I went to the Saints game. It's uh, it's probably about a nine hour round trip for me from, from North London on a Friday or a Thursday to get up the M6 to watch the game, to turn around and come back again after the game. But it's worth it, you know. It's, it's a shame that the south of England don't know as much about the game as certainly the M62 corridor does. My favourite players over the time that I've watched uh, rugby league, Matt, Matt King, the Australian boy, used to play on the wing for us. Uh, Lee Breers, I, I used to love watching Breezy play for us. And at the moment, Daryl Clark, I, I just think he's been absolutely sensational. But I've got a healthy respect for everyone who plays in, in the league. You know, I watch not just Warrington games, but if other games are on telly, just to watch, see what ev everyone else is doing. And obviously, uh, you know, with the World Cup coming up as well, not too long away, I'll be supporting them. It needs exposure to sell the product because it's a brilliant product. So I've got to say, the sport is fantastic. Every every part of the sport, it, you know, there's nothing about the sport, the skill, the pace, the camaraderie between the teams, by the way. And you know, something like tonight, well, you know, with Rob. You know, people from all sports are sat in that room down there because of A, the sport, and more importantly, obviously, Rob and what he's given his life to the sport as well. So, um, 
it really is a sport that sort of deserves more profile. The fact of Toronto coming in, obviously Catalan from outside it as well, just adds to profile to the sport. And the more profile it gets, the more people will watch it. And as soon as you watch it, you'll get hooked like I did. I think it'll be a, a fantastic Super League once again this year. Saints were, were dominant last year. Salford surprised a few teams. Wigan uh, punched under their weight, but I think everyone, you know, is, is in with a, with a shouting chance this year, and uh, I think it'll be a fantastic season. To be fair, we've started the season very strongly, but as always, it's always our year at Warrington, and we have to manage expectation. But I think it'll be a, a fantastic Super League once again this year. The Warrington St Helens game last night was sensational. It was a great product for, for certainly Super League. You know, Super League is trying its damnedest to sell in the product. And if you get more games like that, then it sells itself. It's such a tough season. You don't need form now. You need form probably in about six months time. As you see, there's a lot of good teams. Of course, it's our year. Come on now. Josie, it's really nice to hear. Uh, Stuart Pearce, right, giving yeah. the credit to Tony Smith for yep. getting him involved with the spot. Yeah, just a lot done it. Tony gets his uh, head around, but a lot of us rugby league players like other sports as well. You're a Liverpool fan still, or tell uh, us how does that come about? Well, I haven't just jumped on the bandwagon. I go back to Tommy Smith, Emlyn Hughes days, my favourite player, Steve Highway, going back that far. And I'm good mates with Craig Johnson, won five titles with them, uh, won a European Cup, won an FA Cup, scored the winner in the FA, FA Cup in 1986. So I've been able to get over to Anfield on this trip and um, watch the under-23s beat Shrewsbury and move through to the, the next round. I watched, I watched the derby with Dick Barmby the yeah. other night. Oh, so wow. Tottenham legend. Yeah, I, I think, you know, I think a lot of sports are like that too, that you sort of, yeah. you keep an eye on, on that. And you get to you get to meet people through our sports, yeah. don't you? So, yeah. you know, that's, that's, that's been great. I was always John Barnes growing up, mate. Yeah. Back yeah. in the day, big <laughs> afro and had a big uh, head of hair. What's your second sport, Sean? What do you like to watch other than rugby? I, I love um, I love athletics, actually. My yeah, my old man, he used to compete. He's, he was in the Paralympics, so that's right, yeah. we used to like, grow up and watch all yeah. the diamond leagues and, and stuff like that, so I love watching that. What were those? It shot put? What? Shot put, yeah, yeah. Shot put and javelin. He won gold there in Sydney, so... Um, yeah, 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 yeah. I don't yeah, know yeah. all this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. no, yeah. Tell yeah, us so about this. Cool. Yeah, oh, yeah, he lost his leg when he was like four years of age and... Um, you know, he was very active, used to love love sport, we used to play rugby league with one leg and, um, you know, he was always, uh, you know, an uh, athlete, loved athletics, so he competed and went to two Paralympics and then, um, you know, on his second time round, got a gold and silver at the Sydney um, Paralympics, so. Did, did you ever compete as well? Have you ever had a gold? Yeah, like, that, was my, yeah, that was my second sport. I used to love being like a middle distance runner and Class. used to go down with him to all the leagues when I was growing up and watch him compete and compete on the same day, so I, used to, I just love athletics and love when the Olympics come around and every every four years we really get amongst that but growing up we used to play each other and everything you know tennis and you know cricket and, and whatnot but he's he, he's very competitive and he st never stopped him from you know having a normal life he's very competitive in everything he does and you know that shows with the you know his success on on, on the you know athletics field so you talk about stories that we don't yeah. know that yeah. behind the mm. scenes like that, that that's yeah. it's interesting because in the UK uh, Adam Hill's a comedian who's really famous on yeah. Channel 4, he's, he's been a big driving force behind uh, physical disability rugby league and that's been huge, uh, then we've got learning disability rugby league mm. and we really, uh, as a sport, so inclusive, it, it's a bit of dad now, he could come out of retirement and, and, and get involved. But <laughs> I think he thinks he can still do it. <laughs> <laughs> but it's awesome, you know, I, that's what I grew up around, he was uh, also like, he used to work with um, you know, kids with disabilities and yeah. go to schools and we used to go to wheelchair rugby like yeah. tournaments and stuff and really? it's great to see you know that inclusivity like you know being drawn upon now it's uh, really good to see have you seen the wheelchair rugby man it's, it's we played it we played it we played it carnage so hey, that's oh, next level yeah. that's, it's that's so just so. there's no <laughs> preservation whatsoever it's just uh, kamikaze stuff lastly guys just like to say thank you to you both we're asking you both to put your monikers uh, on the table next week Jonesy uh, is one of the big friends of the show the people's champion he, the people's champion the man of the people uh, Anthony Gellin it's, it's great to have him back he's in the top two story tellers for me him and Tom Lynham at yeah, Warrington yeah. who's the best storyteller you've come across in your on your journey yes. as, a, as a player or as a as a presenter it's a guy called Roy Simmons Played, played for Penrith. He's the cow is a little country town as well in New South, northern New South Wales. He's the same young bloke who came from there. Just the laconic, laid back, 
but he's just got story after story and he just tells them in the best possible way. I, sometimes, I don't know if he's serious when he starts off and where this story's going to go, but he's great company, loves to be. When they won the grand final, when Penrith won the grand final and he was the captain, he said at the post-match speech, um, thanks for coming, like, thanks for all the support. I'm going to have a beer with every one of you, the supporters of you. Since then, he's made it his life's aim to do exactly that. He's, oh, he's, he's, wow. he's working his way through. <laughs> he, actually, he coached at Hull, yeah. Roy Simmons. Yeah. So, yeah, no, I'm a good company and a good storyteller. By yourself, kids, best storyteller. Well, I think James Maloney, he's got something to say <laughs> about everything that bloke. He doesn't shut up, but, you know, he's a, he's a hard case. And you just love having those guys around the team because it... Yeah, they, they're such a laugh to have around it, boost the morale, and you know, like I said, they've just got so many stories to tell. I'm keen to sign this table, guys, but Sam Burgess hasn't left any room for anybody no, else. No, 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 he's yeah, gone yeah, big. No, yeah. Ellie had a little bit last year, Sammy's sick in the, fr <laughs> the front spot this year. Okay, <laughs> stick your mic on. We'll see you next week back here on Free Sports for another dose of rebellion with the one, the only man of the people, Anthony Gallen. Good night and God bless. We are working with the Rugby League All-Stars to help support and raise awareness for some of the heroes who play our game. To be a part of it, visit rugbyam.co.uk forward slash all-star events.